They are on a long and difficult trek, thousands of Central American migrants making their way as a group to the United States. The caravan, pausing for rest today in Weeksla, Mexico, has suddenly become the subject of heated political rhetoric here. But first, a look at who is traveling in the caravan and why from Amna Nawaz. <laughs> in the southern Mexican city of Tapachula, more than 7,000 migrants, mostly Honduran, woke this morning to continue the journey north. When we heard the caravan was coming, we joined. This is an opportunity to improve my family's life. Reuters reporter Delphine Schrank is traveling with the group and describes it as less of a caravan and more of an exodus. It's a real mixture. I mean, as, a, as, as the majority are fairly young, uh, but it's a, it's it's a complete mixture of men, women, lots of children, people of various ages. Caravans like this have been organized for more than a decade. A group migration built on the principle of safety in numbers and helped along the way by nonprofits like Pueblos y Fronteras. Earlier this spring, a smaller caravan of around 1,500 left southern Mexico. Only a few hundred ultimately sought asylum in the U.S. Schrenk says this group came together much more spontaneously and that the migrants she's talked to are more concerned with what they're leaving than where they end up. Over and over, I've heard from dozens of migrants who say the same thing, that no matter how cruel or how difficult uh, the welcome at the United States border, the overwhelming need they feel to flee uh, a toxic mixture of violence, corruption, unemployment, political failure, as they see it in Honduras, really is what weighs most upon their minds. President Trump's escalating rhetoric, like at this Texas rally Common last sense. night, has brought this Common year's caravans sense. to the forefront of the immigration debate, two weeks ahead of the midterm elections. You know, what's happening right now, as a large group of people, they call it a caravan. I think the Democrats had something to do with it, and now they're saying, I think we made a big mistake because people are seeing how bad it is. Meanwhile, the migrants continue their journey, mostly on foot, and now over a thousand miles from the nearest U.S. border crossing. Picking it up from there to discuss some of the rhetoric and policy surrounding all of this is Alan Gomez. He's an immigration reporter for USA Today. Alan Gomez, welcome back to the News Hour. We heard the president there in Texas last night, but I want to ask you about something he said a little earlier today in the Oval Office. He was asked about a couple of allegations he's made about the caravan. He has said that there are members of the gang MS-13 and, as he put it, Middle Easterners traveling in that caravan. Here is what the president said about that earlier today. Certainly you have people coming up through the southern border from the Middle East and other places that are not appropriate for our country. And I'm not letting them in. They're not coming in, all right? They're not coming in. We're going to do whatever we have to. They're not coming in. Alan Gomez, what do you make about what the president is alleging there? Is there any validity to that claim? Not that his administration can point to as of yet. Um, we've been asking the Department of Homeland Security ever since he started making those claims in a series of tweets um, what, where the proof was that there were members of gangs, criminals, um, as he refers to them just generally as Middle Easterners, in the group. And they haven't been able to point out any examples or any proof that anybody exists. Instead, what they're doing is they're falling back on percentages. Um, they've been passing out data of the number of criminals, gang members, and people from, quote, special interest countries um, who have been caught trying to cross the border illegally over the past year. Um, when you put those numbers into context, it shows that about 5% of people caught along the border um, are, have some kind of criminal background. About 0.3% are gang members, and about 0.8% come from special interest countries. That includes some Middle Eastern countries. Um, but So they're saying, hey, the numbers indicate that there has to be in that group. And Vice President uh, Pence made that same claim that it, if you look at the size of this, there just has to be some of those folks in there. Um, in the last hour, we've heard from the Department of Homeland Security that they are confirming that there are some criminals and some Middle Easterners in there. Uh, we followed up with them but haven't heard anything back. You know, the president's focus on this specific caravan has elevated it substantially. There have been caravans in the past, one earlier this year. You know, in the entire immigration landscape, which you cover so deeply, why is, has this one event caught the president's attention so strongly? Timing. We're 
just about two weeks away from the election. And basically, this falls into his rhetoric so perfectly. Um, he's, he's basically taking a page out of his 2016 uh, presidential campaign and just riling up on immigration right now. This is an issue that, that the 2016 election proved is one that will rile up his base, is one that appeals to them, is one that interests them, um, is one that scares them. Um, and so the timing of this, the idea that for the next two weeks, because this caravan will, it's a slow march, they're walking, they're still well over a thousand miles away from the border. The fact that these images will be aired on TV repeatedly for these next two weeks is perfect for him because it shows this idea of an invasion, as he likes to call it. I've been watching um, congressional debates around the country and House districts in, small, in states like Idaho and Iowa and Minnesota and, 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 and Pittsburgh in the Northeast. You hear this Honduran caravan coming up repeatedly because it's something that Republicans realize is something that can energize their base. Alan Gomez of USA summer. Today, who covers immigration there. We're going to have to leave it there. Thank you very much for your time. Okay.